Hi guys, and welcome back to Down Under and South of the Border. I'm Jacob Harrison, and today I'm going to be talking to you about my first leg of my journey. The journey that would change everything. This episode, I'm going to be talking about leaving Sydney to arriving at the gates of Burning Man. I left Sydney August 10 a.m., August 26, 2016. It was about 14 degrees, cold and raining. It was disgusting weather that they never put on the postcards of Australia. And I couldn't wait to get out for my year long of summer. So I was flying Delta. Ah, Delta, I can hear some of you saying already, this does not bode well. But I actually quite liked it. I got the app and so I made sure I had a window seat with a vacant seat next to me for my 15 hour flight from LA to, I mean from Sydney to LA. Got out at LAX and um, it was like 29 degrees and I arrived before I left the magic of the international dateline. Ah. So anyway, LAX is a nice airport or by the end of all my travels I would just call it an airport. Um, and anyway, had a quick transfer from LAX to Vegas where I had a nine hour layover. Um, Yes, what to do in Vegas for nine hours? I could have made it into a fun romp! Um, and just totally, um, yeah, could have screwed up everything really, knowing me. Um, but instead, I decided to be smart. I went out and found a SIM card and a, I got a color in my hair. Um, but I didn't know that, I don't think that the airport is in like the best part of town. So I just walked, I just walked out of the airport and um, I didn't think it was in the best part of town, but I found the SIM card and I found a Walmart and me and Walmart were very much in love still at this stage and um, got my hair colored there, picked up a few things, it was great. Anyway, got back to the airport. So from then uh, it was uh, Vegas to Salt Lake City and Salt Lake City is an interesting airport, nice smoking rooms, I appreciated that and then Salt Lake City to Reno. Um, by the time I deplaned in Reno, it had been 35 hours, still August 26, 2016. The magic of the international dateline. Um, about 10.30 at night at this stage. And um, met my transfer to Circus Circus. If you're familiar with the establishment, the casino in Reno, it's, um, it looks like the bed that Homer makes for Bart in the one of the early episodes of The Simpsons. It's a really creepy clown, a circus themed casino. It's kind of dirty, kind of like, reminds me of the, inside it reminded me of The Shining Hotel. Uh, I went down into, just to have a look at the casino floor and there was people pass out of a pokey machines and things like that and I was like I might just grab a bottle of bourbon and drink it in the bathtub tonight and surf grinder and I didn't even get that far actually I just had a bath I was in Reno for about uh, two days or three days before the burn um, there's not much I really wanted to do in Reno I just had to pick up my stuff um, initially I wanted to shoot a gun but um, this was not after, not long after um, the shootings at the nightclub in Florida and uh, the idea that you know some of my money could somehow be funneled to the NRA, NRA through the gun range I didn't feel comfortable with so I was just like nah, no thanks. So I um, elected not to do that. So pretty much all I did was collect my stuff. Um, I checked out what was on at Circus Circus. Like they had circus shows, but I mean like, you know, just acrobats really. I mean, you know, what's that like? Without the animals, which, you know, I don't want to see a circus show with animals because it's cruel, but without the animals, it's not really very fun. So it's like, what do you do? Um, yeah, and then um, finally on, on the third day or whatever, what day it was, after I picked up and everything, um, I finally met my campmates for the first time. And it was great. We went to the Grand Sierra Resort, much nicer. 
uh, and I met these wonderful people that I've been in daily contact with for months, and it was great, kind of meeting these, you know, you know, profile pictures with bodies. They were, they were real, just like America was real. Then we did the final pack of the U-Haul. Everything just fit. Oh my God, just, just. With some lubrication. Always good. And um. Yeah, it was a slow old ride out to Black Rock City through all the little towns, Gorlack and everywhere. Um, you know, we stopped up off at some traditional American cuisine. We went to an In-N-Out burger. That was cool. They have a secret menu. Like, it's an actual, like, it's not like fast food here in Australia. Like, it's an actual cultural thing, fast food over there. Like, that's pretty cool. Secret menu. I like that. It's good for me. Uh, so yeah, we left to the last points of the default world, Gorlack, Nevada. And um, yeah, not long after that, we could see in the distance the dust rising like the smoke monster from Lost. And uh, it was pretty cool. Me and Kirk, uh, who I was riding with, were getting to know each other in the van, it was very cool. First there weren't many cars that we could see on the road, but slowly but surely we were getting closer and closer to the front of the line. And uh, yeah, then we were in the line. And we were there for about five hours. And it was like a party already. Um, people were coming and going from car to car, um, talking, getting to know each other. It was brilliant. Anyway. Uh, so we were there. I had my ticket on me. We were there um, early, about three days before the festival started. We had early access passes. And um, I had my pass and my ticket clutched in my hand. The window was open. I didn't want to fly away. And ever since I got it, I just... Oh, I was so frightened that at this late juncture, something was going wrong. The ticket was counterfeit or something was going to go wrong. And I was going to get deported and everything would... Just, oh. All my paranoia had, was coming out to play. But we got to the front of the line, I looked at our tickets, all good. Did a quick sweep through of the van, all good. Then, um, waved us through. Maybe about a kilometer and a half, two, um, up the road from the gates. Uh, the greeters, and they're wonderful, amazing, beautiful people. Um, really special. And here I had one of the most spiritual experiences of my life. Um, for virgins, first time burners, um, you are asked to get out the van. Well, everyone gets out of the van. They give you a hug. And they ask you to leave something there, metaphorically. And um, if you roll in the dust, you get dusty. I'm still in my default clothes at the time. Um, what you leave there, what you take away is the dust and something else. And what I left there was fear, parts of my old self that I didn't like, um, a lot of hate, sadness, um, vengeance, um, a lot of things. It's hard to even explain, really, but um, it's something I think about every day, that experience. And banging that gong still echoes in my ears. Uh, you need to go to Burning Man, each and every one of you, to experience it, because I can't it's been almost a year and I can't fully describe what happened just at that 
point, and it hadn't even begun yet. I can't, like at the time, I was just being like, whoa, what was this? And even now, I'm still putting pieces together. That was just the beginning. So I did a, a dust angel. It was fun. It was also it was a symbol. It was a symbol of I was leaving something in in the dust, and the dust was something I was taking away. And at the time, it just felt funny. It's something that's still with me, um, metaphorically and literally. The dust is still in my clothes, in my blood everything it's part of who I am now and I can't wait to get back there so anyway we rendezvoused at the camp with our other early access members and it was dark by this stage so we couldn't really do much but I was just set the eggs out of where the camp was going to be and uh, me and Scott went for a bit of a ride see the initial bits and pieces that were coming up, a few things had started, um, it was just great to start to see it all starting to come together. Um, so over the next two days, uh, it, was a, it was work man, it was a lot of work. Um, it was, not. we didn't have a camp kitchen yet so we were surviving on protein bars and bits of um, pre-cooked bacon that Mary made, very very wise, very wise lady. And um, yeah, it was work. Um, as people slowly kind of trickled into camp, you know, things got a bit easier as we set things up. It was great to see Black Rock City slowly starting to rise from the dust. And uh, yeah, it wasn't, it was nothing compared to what happened once the show got really on the road, which I'll talk about tomorrow on the next episode. So thanks for watching guys, that's um, our first episode on Burning Man, my first experience, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any more, and I love you all, I love you so much. Um, please like me, please like Down Under and South of the Border on Facebook, um, subscribe, please subscribe, and uh, follow me at Cobjack on Instagram for all my butt shots and various other things. And love you. See you soon. Bye.